Good morning and Shabbat Shalom. Thankful for everybody that came out this morning. Uh, like we usually say, thankful for the word. Um, just thankful for how personal that he is to us. Thankful for the things that we go through in our lives. Uh, the teachings we've been watching recently, uh, I enjoyed those. Thankful for that stuff, uh, things that they teach us out of that. Uh, we'll go ahead and start this morning. So if you would, let's all stay in and turn to Proverbs 2. I really like Proverbs. I really like wisdom. I like thought. I like ideas. So that's what we'll get into this morning. So Proverbs 2, and we'll go ahead and start in verse 1. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you, so that you make your ear attend to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding, for if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you would understand the reverence of Yahuwah. Let us lift up our eyes. Yahuwah, thank you for this day that you have given us, Yah. Thank you for your love. Uh, thank you for your word. You're just so great and magnificent. We just want to uh, reverence you and be in awe of you always, Yah, because your wisdom is so above our wisdom, Yah. But even in that word as it speaks, uh, let the wicked man return. Let the wicked man repent of his sins and learn the ways of Yahuwah and learn the thoughts of Yahuwah that we might truly be in reverence and awe of you. We're thankful for everyone who is present here this morning, Yah. I pray that uh, we would have focus on you, uh, that we would relieve our hearts of the world that cares and just so focus on your word uh, that you would join yourself to us, Yah, we pray. You're so great and magnificent. We just want to praise you and say hallelujah. Speak for us at this time. Give us a clear mind, Yah, that we just might reverence you, respect you, and just thank you for how you keep us and preserve us in our lives. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. Amen. So just basics in the very beginning of this, and you probably understand the title of the message the more that we get into it, but just very thankful this morning. Proverbs 2, my son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you. So all of this that he's saying in the very beginning leads up to verse 5. Then you would understand the reverence of Yahuwah. Okay. Uh, we know that reverence is fear. We know that reverence is awe. We know that it's a reverential respect. Okay, We've talked about before and we just continue to repeat that the greatest way that you can show respect to somebody is if you listen to them, if you obey them. So we see that and it'll make a lot more sense later when we get into it. So, uh, the awe of Yah. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you. Uh, he continues on and he talks about treasures in verse 4. You know, <laughs> and this is what we're going to get into this morning, thinking about how much people love wealth. How much people hunger and strive and work and spend their entire lives Trying to get money. And he says, wisdom is greater than that. And I really liked it because when you get into Ecclesiastes, it says that uh, wisdom with an inheritance is good. And in some versions, it makes it almost sound like wisdom is the inheritance or wisdom uh, is an inheritance. And that's not how it's intended to be. It is wisdom with an inheritance. Okay, because if you gain something that you never worked for, you can not value what you have gained and you will not be wise with what you have gained. But if you have wisdom with inheritance, it's a good thing. And that's what he talks about in Ecclesiastes. And it's really good because some people who gain things use all their substance, um, we're just going to leave that there. So Proverbs 2, my son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you. So how precious this morning are the words and the commands of Yah to you? I was trying to look up a little bit of the difference between silver and gold. Did you know that silver is now more scarce when they top, uh, they're digging for it at the top than gold is? And the thing about silver is once you use silver, it is consumed. Okay. 
All the gold that we have ever dug up is still on the earth. Okay? But silver gets used. Okay? In, in different piping, all kinds of stuff. So there is actually less silver than there is gold in the world. Uh, also, it costs the same amount to excavate, mine, gold, and silver, but you get less for it. So when you uh, mine gold, the, you pretty much get your money back. But when you mine silver, there's not much there for you in return and in profit. So you have to get a lot of it to get anything out of it. But nevertheless, silver is more scarce than gold. So, my son, if you accept my words and treasure, very important word, treasure up my commands with you. That word treasure is hide. It means to treasure up. It means to store up. It means to hide. It means to hoard. Reserve. Protect. My favorite one was esteem. If you esteem my words, that means to give them great reverence and honor and glory. How precious is the word to you? And when we continue on the, in this, this is what we get out of it uh, when we get into verse five. Then you would understand the reverence of Yah. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands, that is to protect them, hoard them, reserve them. Can you get enough? Can you ever get enough? And the thing that I'm learning through studying is you really have to dig. And by dig, what I really mean is sometimes these translations that we have are not necessarily what it is saying. Okay? You know that verse uh, where it says, a, uh, it talks about being a friend. In order to have friends, you must first be friendly. Okay? That's not what that says. <laughs> That's not what that says. Uh, it talks about uh, sometimes friends can deceive you. But there are friends that stick closer than brothers. So uh, you have to dig. And the more that we get into this, you understand that <laughs> it don't come free. It does not come free. There is work involved in studying. And the thing is, the more that you study, the wiser you get. But not only that, you have to realize that it's a great sacrifice because of what you know. You might know this now, and now you have to sacrifice this because that is in your life. The more you know, the harder it gets. Okay, But that is no, uh, that's no excuse to not learn. Treasure up the commands. Esteem them. They are honorable. They are glorified. So that you make your ear attend to wisdom. That word attend is inclined. It is to be attentive. Attend. Pay attention. Okay? A lot of times when we come in here, what are we thinking about? Are we thinking about the rest of the world? Are we thinking about what's going on? And somebody talked to me this week about Sabbath. What do you talk about on the Sabbath? Are we talking about the world on the Sabbath? We talk about worldly things on the Sabbath. So I think about that. So that you incline your ear. Pay attention to what's being said. Pay attention, regard. So that you make your ear attend to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. Now, wisdom, we talked about that last week. It is the proper choice between two opposite courses of action. So a road is diverged in a wood and I took the road less traveled, okay? Because honestly, the road less traveled is probably the truth. <laughs> a lot of people congregate uh, to lies because everybody believes them. That's where you see the most people out. Less people love truth. So wisdom, the proper choice between two opposite courses of action. And uh, continuing on, wisdom shows a person which path to choose, how, when, and how much to use of each trait. Have you ever exhausted a trait? We've talked about this before. Everybody has strengths, okay? 
Uh, the, the D personality is very direct. That can be a strength, but sometimes a D can be very overpowering. C, conscientious, detail, very detail-oriented person. But you know what? Sometimes if you pay too much attention to detail, it's what's called uh, analysis paralysis to where you can't move on to the next thing because you're, you can't get it the way you want it. S, steady. A lot of times the S will sacrifice their own desires to take care of others. That can be a positive thing. That can be a negative thing. And then the I, we're very inspirational and talkative people. But when you talk too much, people do not value your words. So we all have strengths and we all have, our strengths can become our weaknesses when they are overplayed. So that's what's called emotional intelligence. That's what wisdom is. Knowing when, how much, and how to use that trait. Because sometimes we can be overbearing in all of it. So that's wisdom. I like wisdom. You know why we want to talk about this this morning is because we all have decisions in our lives. You can't run away from decisions. You have a decision to do this or you have a decision to do that. Have you ever made the wrong decision? Of course we have. Uh, Yah gave me a proverb, Proverbs of Josh. <laughs> and this is what it was, okay? Uh, so we were training somebody this week. It's better to suffer the feeling of reproof than the consequences of the mistake. Let's say that again. It's better to suffer the feeling of reproof than the consequences of mistake. Oftentimes, people correct us out of love. And how does that make you feel? Don't make you feel too good, does it? You don't like to be corrected often, do we? Right? But you know what? It's better to be corrected out of love and listen than to suffer the consequences of actually making the mistake. The reason that we talk about this, we were training somebody this week and we continued, watch your backswing. As you're coming out of an aisle, you have to watch the hood that's behind you because if you swing out, you're going to hit something. Okay? Now listen, if you listen to somebody who's correcting you, it's a lot easier to do that than to suffer the reproach of making the mistake. And you know why? Because after it happens, we are our own worst enemies. We beat ourselves up. I can't believe I did that. And I, and I tell you, the destroying factor that goes on in your head is worse than just listening to somebody and doing it correctly. So just listen. Just listen. And you think about Yah. If he corrects you, it's easier just to listen to him than feeling the, the dread or feeling the, the remorse of making that mistake. So, incline your heart to understanding. We talked about wisdom. You all have choices. We all have uh, decisions in our lives. Wisdom shows the person which path to choose, how, and how much to use of that trait. Understanding is one's ability to deduce. Now, what does deduce mean? <laughs> deduce. Okay, anyway. Uh, it is draw a logical conclusion from one thing or another. That is what understanding is. It is drawing a logical conclusion from one thing or another. So in order to gain wisdom, you have to have understanding. Okay. Uh, this path has got thorns and ditches. This path looks fairly straight. I'm going to take this path. Okay. You are deducing your options. Now, what it talks about is bana. Bana is understanding. The, uh, it is understanding and it flows from within as one analyzes, examines, and plumbs the depths to bring forth hidden perceptions. That is understanding. So you have wisdom and understanding. So that you make your ear attend to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. Sometimes I feel like we cry more for money than we do for wisdom and understanding. More people in the world 
would rather be rich than smart. So he's talking about lifting up crying. Now, this is also a desire, a hunger. Lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures. You think about how much effort has to be put in to mine and to dig. It is work. It takes effort. It is labor. That's why he connects the two. Now, let's talk about this because it gets better. When you do all this, you accept my words, treasure up my commands, incline your ear to wisdom, incline your heart to understanding, cry out for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding, seek her as silver, and search as hidden treasures. There's a desire there. You think about the gold rush. People went nuts, mad over the gold. I'm going to California for the gold rush, okay? People were mad for it. If people were as mad as for gold or silver as they were for wisdom, we'd be a lot better off. But notice he says, when you do this, and only when you do this, then you would understand the reverence of Yahuwah. When you cherish his words, when you treasure his words, you esteem his words, you cry out for discernment, you want it as much as you want money, silver. Gold. Now, this is what we get out of it. Have you ever, let's say, cried out for understanding, wanted to know wisdom, uh, dug for it, searched for it, you were really seeking for it, and then you find it. And then when he reveals it to you, how awesome is it? How great is it? So when you do that and you have that desire, this is what the title of the message is, the all of Yah. That's what reverence is. Notice, when you do this, then you would understand the awe of Yah. You would understand the reverence of Yah. Uh, we were watching these videos on debates between Jews for Judaism and Jews for Christianity or Jews for Christ. Um, and the more that I look at it, we try to be logical is what we try to do. And we understand that the Messiah that came did not fulfill the Messianic prophecies, uh, did not set up the kingdom, uh, did not set up the temple. Uh, nobody, everybody's still guessing who is Yah. Okay, and there was another one and I can't remember what that was. So he has not fulfilled those. Okay, oh yeah, it was a, a spiritual and a physical restoration of Israel is what the other one was. Those things have not happened yet, okay? We're logical. That's it. It's logical. But when it comes to the other side, it's very emotional. It's very emotional. And if you don't accept what they're handing out, you're destroyed. You're destroyed. They will destroy you emotionally. And as we were watching this debate, the people that were standing up, this guy, you can tell, it's just all emotion because the guy goes it's just really sad that uh we see jesus and he came and now you're still waiting for him to come the first time and he's like you're just going to miss out it's all emotional they try to break you down emotionally and they want to powder you to dust until you convert now let's flip it on the other side we were that we were that person you were that person, and now I see who I was. Where are you going to go when you die? Yeah. Where are you going to go when you die? Don't you know this is the only way? There's no other option. They back you into a corner, and you have to accept. Yah is going to put forth his Messiah, and everyone will know who Yahuwah is. There will be no more religions. Uh, we talked about this this week also. Uh, people who say, well, everybody has had a religious experience, okay? Remember the day you were saved. Remember that? The day you were saved, okay? Those religious experiences happen across the whole plane. 
There are people that say Islam saved my life. There are people that say other religions saved my life. Notice it's an individual experience. Man, y'all are so good, y'all. Okay, <laughs> it's an individual experience, okay? So who's to say that your experience is any greater than any other person's experience? Yah is good. Everybody at Mount Sinai, I'm tingling. Everybody at Mount Sinai had a spiritual revelation. They all had a spiritual experience as a group of people in a nation had a spiritual experience at the, same time. at the same time. You cannot compare that to anything. Who is to say one religion is not greater than another other? But we have Mount Sinai. A group of people saw a revelation and had a spiritual experience. Then you would understand the reverence of Yahuwah. And that's when I just want to be in reverence of him in awe when he teaches me stuff like that. And find the knowledge of Elohim. But you have to, you have to want it as much. Like, and that's why he compares it because people love money. But you have to, and, and people say you need money to live. If you were wise, your wisdom is going to get you farther than your money is. And uh, we were talking also uh, that once all the food is gone or once uh, everything is gone, you can't eat money. You can't eat it. Once it's all gone and once we've destroyed everything, you can't eat money. So we need to be wise. To find the knowledge of Elohim, for Yahuwah gives wisdom out of his mouth, knowledge and understanding, and he treasures up stability for the straight, a shield to those walking blamelessly, to watch over the paths of right ruling. In the way of his kind ones, he guards. Those who reverence him, respect him, want to know about him, are in reverential awe of him. He guards them. Then you would understand righteousness and right ruling and straightness, every good path. If you accept my words and treasure up my commands. For wisdom would enter your heart and knowledge be pleasant to your being. Discretion would guard you. Understanding would watch over you. Um, there is a meme out there and it is... I don't have any time. You know how much I love exercising. But anyway, uh, it goes, I don't have any time to exercise. Uh, I, I wish I could be like you. I don't have any time to exercise. And me over in the corner like, I got to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to exercise. <laughs> so if you want it, you can have it. But you have to be diligent. And you have to be disciplined. Sometimes when I put on my running shoes, I necessarily don't want to run. I'm not feeling it. But I make myself. You have to be disciplined enough to have that desire. And if you want it, you can have it. It's yours. But you have to practice it. And you can't have it all in one day. You have to be patient with it. You don't know all things in one day, but through your life, you gain experience. If you are diligent, you can have it. But if you don't care, you can't have it. If you don't put the work in, you will not know. If you don't dig, you can't understand. Then you would understand righteousness and right ruling. Discretion will guard you. Understanding would watch over you. But you have to treasure up the word in order to perform it. To deliver you from the evil way, from the man who speaks perversities. Those who leave the paths of straightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil. They delight in the perversities of evil, whose paths are crooked and they are perverted in their ways to deliver you from the strange woman, from the foreigner who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and has forgotten the covenant of her Elohim. For her house has sunk down to death and the paths uh, uh, to death None going into her. Now, uh, what he is doing, he is comparing wisdom with adultery uh, because he makes a comparison in between Proverbs and all of this, uh, a wise person and a foolish person. There are so many different comparisons. Uh, uh, it talks about how wisdom is a woman, but then it also talks about the harlot. 
And we all have a choice to either be wise or foolish. That's what Proverbs is about. You have a choice, okay? Uh, also, this woman is a representation of adultery because you can have a choice to remember the covenant of Yah or you can have the choice to forget the covenant of Yah, like it says right here, and has forgotten the covenant of her Elohim. Verse 17. It's an option. It's a choice. Wisdom. Decision. And our paths are for the dead, none going into her adultery, forsaking the commandments, uh, forsaking the covenant, nor do they reach the path of life. No, uh, she not, so walk in the way of goodness and guard the paths of righteousness. For the straight shall dwell in the earth and the perfect be left in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the treacherous ones plucked out of it. Okay, so he's telling you, be faithful. When you seek wisdom as for hid treasure, along with it, you learn to respect him. It literally puts you in awe. That's what he's talking about. The world loves money more than they love knowledge. There is a longing desire for people to be wealthy. Look how many songs there are out there <laughs> about money and being rich and having excess in life. Because they want to distract you. They want you to be drawn away from understanding. Ecclesiastes 7. I really like Ecclesiastes uh, 7, just the whole chapter. It's really good. A name is better than precious oil and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go, verse 2 now, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men and the living take it to heart. So you all have an end. That's what he's saying. Everybody, nobody escapes death. That's what he's saying. Everybody has an end. And consider that we all have an end. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to continually be a fool in feasting. The reason is, and the, what they talk about this in these verses, is that when you go to uh, the house of mourning, when you go to um, the uh, funeral, they tell you eulogies. This is what this person did. This is what you can learn from those things. And also there is weeping of people who miss respectable people. Let's get into this real quick while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so there was, uh, I was listening to this one thing and this guy, he's really smart. He said, um, you are as I am. That's what he said, okay? Uh, he was talking about, he had money, but he goes, ultimately in the long run, we go to the same Dairy Queen. We eat the same things. We get the same gas. And he was like, it don't matter in the long run. And he goes, there are rich people out there that are not respected among their loved ones, their family, okay? In the long run, he goes, love is what matters in the end. And this is what he said. He said, I met a Jewish woman and she said, uh, when I enter into a room or when I'm thinking about the concept, she goes, uh, she was a Jewish woman. She lived through the Holocaust. And she goes, when I think about it, this is what I tell myself. Who would hide me? Who would hide me? Ask yourself that. How many people have you uh, lost their respect? How many people don't care for you as a person? In the end, love is all that's going to matter. Okay, so ask yourself that who would hide me because these people had this all this money and were not respected by anybody in the long run. Money is not going to save you in the long run. The people that you have touched and the people that have earned or gained your respect or uh, that respect you. That's what's going to matter in the long run. Don't be like what we came out of. Don't be like that. So Ecclesiastes 7 and 8, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So realize all things take time. 
All things take time. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Now notice, the end of a matter is better than the beginning. Sometimes it's hard to start something. Sometimes it's hard to start running. But at the end of it, you know what? I don't regret it. I'm glad that I did it. I feel a lot better. When you're running, there's a thing called runner's high. Where you're just in the mood and you're in the mode. And you're like hitting every step and the strike feels great. It's called runner's high. By the end of it, you're thankful. The end of somebody's life is better than the beginning of it. Um, they'll remember how you ended more than how you began. So, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do not be hasty in your spirit to be provoked. That word can also mean angry. For wrath rests in the bosoms of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For it is not wise of you to have asked about this. You are living in a good time. Everybody has had good days. And this is what I like about the thought is you're never going to get the same experiences back that you've had. But who's to say you won't have greater experiences? So if you have something in your life that you are enjoying and you have that experience, when you have it, embrace it. That's what he talks about here too. When you have the good days, embrace them. When you have the sad days, consider. So you're not going to get those experiences back, but who's to say that you're not going to have better days than what you have had? Don't live in the past. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For it is not wise of you to have asked about this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. And an advantage to those who see the sun. That, uh, that is an expression of those who live. Okay? If you're dead, you don't see the sun. That's an expression of those who live are those who see the sun. So, uh, wisdom with an inheritance is good. And an advantage to those who see the sun, for wisdom protects as silver protects. So he's talking about both now. Silver is like the inheritance. Wisdom is to be wise, choosing the right decisions, make taking the right option. Now, for wisdom protects as silver protects, but the advantage of knowledge, uh, the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. So in the long run, money can't save you. In the long run, it's going to be gone. So he says, and I really like that, when you seek wisdom, uh, in the beginning, some things are hard to understand, but in the end, we shall see clearly. Uh, some of these verses, I think it was in verse 11. Yep. So verse 11, an inheritance is good when used wisely. The BBE says wisdom with an inheritance is good. The ISV says wise, wise use of possessions is good. It brings benefit to the living. But in the long run, what does he say? Wisdom is good for wisdom protects as silver protects. But the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. Silver does not give life to those who have it. See the work of Elohim for who is able to make straight what he has made crooked. Be glad in the day of prosperity. But in the evil day or the day of calamity and trouble, take note that Elohim has also appointed the one as well as the other so that man should not uncover what is after him. Sometimes he puts us in situations that we necessarily didn't want to be in. Why? For us to understand Yah is in control. You don't know what's next. He has control over all things. He puts you in situations that you might be humbled. Anything, life can change in a moment. So, I also put a little star here. A person slow to anger is wise. Money doesn't give life to them that have it. It doesn't make your life better. 
And um, I know the people that strive for money are never satisfied. And the reason I say that is because you can never have enough. They say it's easy to make money, but it's hard to save. Money doesn't get you as far as wisdom. People can have a lot of money, but in the end, only wisdom saves. That's why it says it's good to be wise with your money. It's good to be wise with an inheritance. Sometimes you can't always buy everything that you want. Because otherwise you would have nothing. So, in the end, love is what matters. Rich people can become heartless people. Because they begin to love their money more than those around them. Remember, a Jewish woman lived through the Holocaust, and this is the question she asks herself. Who would hide you? Yah did say, now realize, rich in wisdom. Yah did say, love your neighbor. Yah did say, love the stranger. How have we treated one another? Talking about earning people's respect. Who respects us enough to hide us? Have you gained people's respect? Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15 and 27. He who is greedy of gain troubles his own house. But he who hates bribes lives forever. Forever. Man, I've just been mixing up words recently. It's not even funny. Uh, the heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. Not everything needs our instant response. Okay? The wise person's going to think about how am I going to answer this? Okay? And this is, we're still talking about the same concept, gaining respect. We talked about, then you shall know the reverential awe. When people seek Yah's commands and seek Yah's wisdom as they do for silver, then they understand the awe of Yah. Okay? And when you have that and you share that with people in a respectable way, you gain their awe. <laughs> you gain their respect and their reverence. So, not everything that people say to us, and just like we were talking about in Ecclesiastes, the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Not everything needs our instant response. Continuing on, where I was at, 1527. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked, wicked pours out trouble, evil. Yahuwah is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart. A good report gives morrow to the bones. An ear that hears the reproof of life dwells among the wise. What were we talking about? Listening, hearing. He who ignores discipline hates himself. He who listens to reproof gets understanding, the ability to deduce, the ability to break it down and make the right decision. And notice how it said, uh, the heart of the righteous ponders how to answer. But he who listens to reproof gets understanding. The reverence of Yahuwah is the discipline of wisdom. Therefore, you are to discipline yourself in order to make right decisions. And before esteem is humility. That is to be humiliated. I really like the quote, uh, a humble person is one who accepts their faults and does not boast in their strengths. That is what it means to be humble. Continuing on, that person ponders, they study, they meditate, they devise how to answer. Life is full of decisions. Study to make the right ones. <laughs> Studying is work. It takes effort to learn and apply. Finding the truth takes diligence, patience, time, effort, hunger, Passion, it takes work, it takes devotion. You have to be devoted to it. Deuteronomy 31. The fear of 
fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. Everybody knows that scripture. Deuteronomy 31 and 10. And Moshe commanded them at the end of seven years, at the appointed time, the year of the release at the festival of Sukkot. When all Israel comes to appear before Yahuwah, your Elohim, in the place which he chooses, read this Torah before all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, the men and the women and the little ones and your sojourner who is within your gates. So everybody. Assemble everyone. The sojourner that is within your gates so that they may hear and so that they learn to revere Yahuwah your Elohim, and guard to do all the words of this Torah. So um, at the end of seven years, the appointed time, the festival of Sukkot, everybody comes together, everybody hears the Torah, everybody learns about the Torah in order to learn how to reverence Yahuwah. Remember, the fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom, that everybody would become just in awe of him as a group. Of people, Remember, I talked about uh, the greatest way to respect somebody is to listen, obey. And that's what he wants from us. Assemble the people and their children, everybody, who have not known it should hear and learn to revere Yahuwah your Elohim as long as you live in the land you are passing over the Yarden to possess. The Torah teaches you to reverence Yah. Learn. They shall learn to fear. That is, they shall teach. They shall exercise the reverence of Yah. They shall be taught the reverence of Yah. They shall be trained to respect Him. They shall become experts. They shall become skilled. The fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. Yah deserves our respect. But when you love his commands, you seek it as for hid treasure, then you see it. Like we talked about, when you are digging for something that you really want to know and he reveals it to you, you are just in awe. Psalms 119 and 1. Then we'll close out. Baruch are the perfect in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. You regulate, you conduct, you uh, regulate, conduct, can't remember what the other one was, uh, your way of life. That's what the word walk means. Who walk in the Torah of Yahuwah. Baruch are those who observe his witnesses, who seek him with all their heart. All. That is a desire to know him. Seek him with all their heart. Even they shall do no unrighteousness. They shall walk in his ways. It's better to suffer the feeling of reproof than the consequences of making the mistake. We all have decisions in our life. Seek Yah. Learn wisdom. Learn how to make the correct decisions. What do I need to do now? And in order to do that, you have to have wisdom and understanding. Understanding the ability to deduce the situation through analyzing, through conducting. You have to know which way to choose through comparing them both. Yah is good. Seek Yah with all your heart. Thank you. Yahuwah, thank you for this day that you've given us, Yah. Your love is so good. Uh, thank you for your wisdom, how you deal with us, Yah, your, pe your peace and your patience with us. Uh, keep us in preserve us, Yah. We just pray over the congregation here, just that we would walk closer to you, Yah, and further from the world. Uh, we just want to hold you with utmost respect and reverence, Yah, for there is no one like you, and we can say that with the humblest of hearts. Yah, you are so good, so great, so magnificent. You are with the righteous. You are the one who has created the heavens and the earth, and you hear our prayers. We lift you up on high. We thank you for who you are. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah.